The following is a selected video from masterthecontent.com where you will find an extensive video library of lectures for a variety of standardized admission tests. We offer over 600 hours of detailed video lectures for a multitude of standardized tests. Use our interactive in-lecture table of contents to find specific topics of interest. Work through numerous in-lecture examples to help you internalize concepts. To learn more, visit masterthecontent.com. Your career, our passion. Now what this diagram on the screen illustrates uh, is Mendel's model for inheritance of alleles of a single gene. Now each plant has two alleles for the gene that controls flower color. And as you can see right here, the purple flowers or the plants that had purple colored flowers, they have two dominant alleles. That is the genotype of those flowers. Now for the white flowers, the pure breeding or the pure line of white flowers, they have two recessive alleles. So they have a homozygous recessive genotype that allows the white color to prevail. So what you can see is that for true breeding varieties, you are always going to have uh, those organisms having identical alleles. So they're always going to be homozygous for one of the traits. They're either going to have two dominant alleles or two recessive alleles. And like I said, the dominant allele is indicated by a capital letter, so P, capital P for purple color, and the recessive allele is indicated by a small, usually italicized letter, so small p for the white flower color. Now, during the formation of gametes, so I'm talking about during the formation of eggs and sperm, there's only one possible allele that can end up in the gametes that we get from a purple a pure, a pure breeding purple flower and the gametes that we get from a white pure breeding white flower. So all the gametes from the purple flower will obviously have the dominant allele. Remember, according to, according to the law of segregation, those alleles will segregate or separate during gamete formation and each of them will go into a gamete. But because all of the alleles are dominant, it's a pure breeding line, all of the gametes, all of the gametes that are formed will also have that dominant allele. Now the reverse or the flip side is true for the recessive alleles because it's homozygous recessive. So all of the gametes that are produced from this pure breeding line of white flowers will all have a recessive allele. So what happens is that once we cross these two flowers, the first filial generation, like we said, are all purple and they will have a genotype that's a combination of these two pure breeding lines, which is this genotype right here. So that is a heterozygous genotype consisting of a dominant allele for purple color and a recessive allele for white color. Now, all the F1 hybrids, all the F1 generation will have purple flower color because like we said, that's a dominant allele and they will have a heterozygous genotype. Now, if we want to predict what happens in the second filial generation, we can use a structure that's called a Panette grid to very easily do so. So it's a very simple genetic tool that you can use to predict uh, the outcomes of genetic crosses. And because of the fact that we're dealing with one character, flower color, and all the F1 hybrids that we are crossing have the same genotype, we only need uh, a grid that has four cells or that has four blocks right there because we have a heterozygous genotype so all the gametes from F1 hybrids will either be will either have the dominant allele or the recessive allele so what you do in a panette grid is that you're going to take the gametes from one of the parents so from one of the F1 parents and you're going to place them at the top right there one for each column and then you're going to take uh, the gametes from the eggs of another F1 plant, so the mother, the female variety, and you're going to put them on the left side right there, one for each row. So all you're going to do is simply cross these alleles uh, vertically and horizontally to come up with all the possible genetic combinations or all the possible genotypes that you will see in the F2 offspring. So for instance, that and that would give us a uh, homozygous dominant genotype for that offspring, that and that would give us a heterozygous genotype, that and that would give us another heterozygous genotype, and the last one down at the corner right there would result in a homozygous recessive genotype. So those are the only ones that are going to be white. 
So a cross that involves heterozygous, like those we see in the F1 generation, the first filial generation is called a monohybrid cross. So what a monohybrid cross is, is just basically a mating between two individuals that have different alleles of, at one genetic locus of interest. So the character that you are studying in a monohybrid cross is governed by two or more alleles at a single gene locus. So this is a monohybrid cross. So selfing or self-pollinating or cross-pollinating, the F1 hybrid is an example of what we call a monohybrid cross. So that's pretty much um, how the cross happens going from the parental generation to the first filial generation to the second filial generation. And as you can see, the phenotypic ratio is three to one. So for every three purple flowers, we had one white flower. The genotypic ratio is slightly different because we have one homozygous um, dominant genotype. We have two, these two right here, homozygous uh, heterozygous genotypes, and we have one homozygous uh, recessive genotype. So the ratio genotypically is one to two to one. One homozygous dominant, two heterozygous, and one homozygous recessive. So what we are going to do is we're going to quickly move on because that explains that it's law of segregation and how gametes separate into um, or how alleles separate into gametes. And we're actually going to look at